now it's heart disease day and it's like what about the women women have hearts too i know some of you guys might not believe it after what these women put you through but they do in fact have hearts they have hearts <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. Ah, ah, <laughs> ah, ah. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Bully de Bum. Boy on the bone. <laughs> and this here is Frank wearing red, which is psychologically the most attractive color you can wear, girls and guys. And also today, if you wear red, it is it is um, for heart health awareness. So there's going to be some sexy people promoting hearts out there. <laughs> um, yeah, look at Frank. He looks better today. Look at him. Out of the three of no, us. No, that's true. It's where I gravitate to. No, so. we've, been, we've been very... You know, like in, Ma- in the Matrix, like the woman in the red dress? Yes. Or the red silky underwear I'm wearing right now? Or the red shoes in Schindler's List. Or in Wizard of Oz. Yeah, you're right. Well, speaking of red, guys, check this out. That's a full red side. A long time ago, we had a Rubik's Cube episode. And I I gave you the job to learn how to do the Rubik's Cube. And what you did instead (laughs) was you painted over each block into the right color. Yeah. Then after that, you've seen me fiddling with it and ruining it. So not only was it painted over... It was then once again scrambled with paint on top. But I, in my off time, when I probably should have been doing my Bible readings, instead, I did something just as valuable. I am very, very, very impressed. I solved the Rubik's Cube. You solved it. Do I look more attractive next to the red side? Unsolvably, because like you said, I had painted it um, random, scrammed them, and... And that's really great. Thank you. Do you want to see me ruin it? <laughs> no, please on don't. On my television? No, no, no. Spencer, don't. Don't, 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 I'm not there yet. <laughs> my- We're working on her uh, psychotherapy. <laughs> or what is it when you do something over and over till you get over it? Oh, um, exposure therapy. Exposure yeah. therapy. But that's what I did on my Thursday afternoon. What did you do? I, um, what did I do on Thursday afternoon? I'm trying to think. I was waiting for the uh, the Haas F1 car to be revealed, but that was revealed this Why? this morning. They're not that good. They they were the worst ones last yeah. year. Okay, first of all, I'm bullied to bum, which is Red Bull's mascot, not for the drink or for the um, F1 car, but for the Austrian soccer team that they bought. Yeah, because they came from Austria, correct? That's where they originated. Oh, right. I think we looked this up yeah. before. Yeah. So I, that's who I was. I believed the bomb. Um, Formula One. Have you, have you started watching Drive to Survive? It's, I it's w- on your list. Well, for tonight. I was. Uh, that's going to be your, your weekend. Yeah. You yeah. Have a nice little I'm not even joking. I'm, hey. not, I'm not even joking. I don't, I don't, I don't hate on it. F1 um, racing is, is very big in the news right now. Yeah. Because um, they're getting started for the 2022 season. Yes. It's going to be this the biggest change in rules of Ooh. car design. Okay. Um, so that Mercedes can stop just winning every single thing? Yeah, maybe. It has all to do with the, the 13 inch tires to 18 inch and the, the wings and the bottom and the top and the, everything. Yeah. Each um, team is going to reveal their cars. Red Bull said we're going to reveal ours on February 9th. Everyone's waiting for that. Haas is the worst, but they revealed theirs today. Oh, Actually, nice. I don't think they revealed the actual car. They they did like renderings of what uh, what it would really. I think they're gonna reveal it in March. But um, yes, Haas is the worst, but they're the first ones to show it. So um, they're showing their hand. They're showing their hand. Mercedes is like, let's see what we're working with, and then we'll throw billions of dollars at you. So yes. it's it's interesting. Formula One, they call it um. Like the cup, the you know, like the World Cup. Yeah, they call it the Constructors Cup. Really, and what it means is because so much of it has to do with the whole team and mm. the even just the making of the car. Oh yeah, and that's why. Like, is um, Lewis Hamilton one of the best drivers? Sure, but they're all amazing drivers, and okay. it, a lot to do with the car that you're in. So right. it makes it more interesting, or not, or so, depending on how you look at yeah. it, because. It's like Mercedes always wins, but it's almost like that's part of the competition. It's well now there's gonna. I th- I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a price cap on 
oh. the the the, the uh, modifications and their rules. Haas um, is owner of NASCAR, NASCAR Cup. Oh. NASCAR Cup Series co-owner Gene Haas has their hand in the F1. He just loves fast cars. Yeah. And, you got a fast car. And, um, what was I going to say about that? I was going to say that most, it's called the Billionaire Boys Club F1. Yeah. <laughs> all rich people. Even all the drivers are were, were loaded. Extremely from, rich. Yeah. There was like one driver that everyone was rooted for because he wasn't rich. Mm. But normally it's your dad owns a, owns a, I'm pretty sure even. Extremely um, rich. The guy who just won, Max Verstappen, his parents or somebody. Yeah, Max Verstappen, who I think was just nominated for some kind of Sportsman of the Year award. And I saw a lot of comments that said he's the least sportsmanly person out there. Is that correct from the show that you watched? Yeah. <laughs> um, so the car, I guess, that was used last year, Max, as you mentioned, took it out for a trip around the ice track. Yes. Put some spikes on the tires. Pirelli tires. Pirelli tires. You've been really into sports this past two weeks. I have. I have. Okay. <laughs> um, ice racing is a thing. It is. And um, Verstappen had never done it before, and he said it was very slippery. <laughs> That's, yeah, that makes a little bit of sense. And he said it's very cold, meaning parts of an F1, um, I guess, extremely expensive uh, car should not be cold, like the brakes and so forth. Yeah. So that's cool. That's cool. Cool. That's frigid. Get it. That's icy. Um. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm going to watch your show, but like knowing that it is the Billionaire Boys Club, I'm wondering if I'm going to protest it instead. You can. I, I don't know why. Well, because they're really terrible people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Christian podcast. Stephen Ross. Well, Jesus said, you know. Yeah. Harder for a rich man to get into heaven or harder for a camel to go through the head of a needle point pen. you always want to quote this verse and you never remember what it is i know generally you, you have all different um Putting versions a camel through the point of a ballpoint pen is easier yeah because they had ballpoint pens in the bible um stephen ross is one of the one of the billionaire boys clubs. he's bringing f1 racing to miami for the first time in 2022 hard rock stadium it's exciting yeah um anywho is there a holidays anything today it's a special day it's friday it's friday february 4th the year is 2022 it is <laughs> uh something i i do think it's I, it might be american I, I mean it might be other countries but i think it's american is it international i don't know it's the whole the heart disease yeah the um heart disease, disease awareness bringing attention to it especially for women Oh, uh, it's always about women. But it's not. And that's why it has to bring attention to it. If you go to the Men have more heart disease than women. And that's why you'll be respected at the emergency room. Oh, uh, if you say I have a heart pain, they you're say, just a woman. Yes. Women don't have hearts. You, <laughs> no, that's not what they say. They say, you probably have anxiety. Uh, you're probably just a little bit hysterical. Oh, yeah. You know, like back in the day when like doctors would prescribe like going out to the um, rural areas. You just need some fresh air. Yeah. You need some clean air. Yeah. She's she's in she's in hysterics. <laughs> um, so even now today, yes, men do have a lot of heart disease. And um, if a man goes in with chest pain or arm pain or also, I think the women's symptoms might be a little bit different. But um, everyone needs to get their hearts checked. Everyone needs to get their hearts checked. Like yesterday was, you know, let's talk about it day. And it's mm -hmm. like, let's talk about it at the workplace. Now it's heart disease day. And it's like, what about the women? Women have hearts, too. I know some of you guys might not believe it after what these women put you through but they do in fact have hearts have hearts physical ones but definitely not metaphorical ones <laughs> no that's not true um maculate heart of mary facts ihm that's my aunt's uh what's it called when you're in a uh, order her order of nuns is ihm the order of nuns but guys today is friday and so it's not about nuns it's not about max verstappen or Formula One, or any of the sports that you've been so interested in lately. <laughs> it's not even about Rubik's Cubes, or is it? You see, a Rubik's Cube is something that you need to solve. And today we're going to solve something. No, we're not. What we're doing is... We might. We're <laughs> we might. It's Dr. Seuss Friday, guys. I'm so happy. You know what else I'm bringing back? What? Art. Oh, you're going to paint... Uh, you just, when I read, you're just bored. And so you're going to pretend like no. it's a segment. I'm going to be... 
inspired by um because i can't see what you're reading until afterwards and so i'm going i'm going to make my own pictures do you think it might affect your listening abilities no it helps my listening abilities as a matter of fact when i was young and went to school it was eyes on me everyone look up pay attention One, two, three eyes on me yeah pay attention and there are some people myself included that listen better if i'm doodling well, that's ADD, and I'm not a psychologist, so I will just let you say that. But it's it is true. Dr. Seuss Friday. What we do in Dr. Seuss is we read a simple Dr. Seuss book. You all know them. You all love them. And we use the simple childlike concepts, and then we broaden them into our adult minds, into our collective age of 95-year-old minds. Mm-hmm. Right, because what makes it a children's book? You let me say collectively we have 95 years old between us. Oh, that's what it meant? No, I was like, I was joking. <laughs> I, was, I mean, it's real old. No, no, no. I know that. I know what it means now that you're saying yeah. it. But when you said it, I didn't think you were actually saying that if you add up both of our <laughs> ages, you'll, you'll, um, you'll get 95. Yeah, what makes it a children's book? I mean... Um, it, well, it's, you know, it's designed for... Wrote and illustrated why? 44 world famous books for children. I understand. And, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Did I just find a little gem? I understand his brand. Dr. Seuss wrote and illustrated 44 world famous books for children. Dot, dot, dot. You know what that's called? An ellipsis. Oh, okay. Is it? Uh, it sounds right, but I don't know. And their lucky parents. Oh, there. See? It says it right there on the back. It's also for adults. And so we use these simple concepts. Last time, you know, the, the book we read was um, Anywhere I Go, Let's Go Play or something. And we're like, come over to my house, maybe. come over to my house, <laughs> whatever it was. And the whole concept was, you know, doesn't matter what race, nationality, economic place you come from, just come out and play. And it's about human connection and what it's all about. And so we took that small little Dr. Seuss concept and then we're able to use it in our lives. Yes. Sometimes you need to simplify things to live a better life. Jesus always said children have the, the greatest hearts or something like that yeah and so there's got to be something to it and so concepts that are good for children i think they might be good for us too so without further ado we are reading the butter battle book do you look up like look at the book first and say do you think we can talk about this or do you just pick will and nilly oh okay <clears throat> um, like, is there gonna be a time where we read a book and we're like uh, that's well okay. yeah i thought that might happen this week oh um I, number one, I was trying to, I remember you saying, I never even heard of these books and you, you have heard of Dr. Seuss books. Yeah, I've so heard num- of this one. Number, you have? I have not. Oh, you have not. So number one, I was trying to find books that you hadn't heard of. Oh, okay. For starters. For seconders. For firsters. For, 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 for firsters and second For seconders, um, yeah, sometimes it opened the book and it's just like blue, <laughs> green, yellow. I think, well, that's going to be a challenge. So no, I don't. Um, the problem with today's book, it's not a problem, oh. but the surprise of today's book is that I ordered it online. So I didn't get a chance to peek through it. You would think that you had more of a chance. You just picked it online randomly? Uh, yeah. It, it had a little bit of a, <clears throat> little bit of a, what could it be about, which I, it what I knew it wasn't shapes, colors, or numbers. So I said, I think this will work. All right. Well, we are reading the Butter Battle book by Dr. Seuss today. Mm. Looks like a big one. I wonder if it's going to be a long one. Only time will tell. I will get to reading now. I'm going to drop. It's labeled for Audrey with love. Who's Audrey? Is that someone in Dr. Seuss's life? I do not know. Okay. (laughs) On the last day of summer, 10 hours before fall... My grandfather took me out to the wall. For a while he stood silent, then finally he said, with a very sad shake of his very old head, As you know on this side of the wall we are yooks, on the far other side of this wall live the zooks. Then my grandfather said, It's high time that you knew, oh, of the terrible horrible things that zooks do. In every zook house and every zook town, Every zook eats his bread with the butter side down. That's not good. But we yooks, as you know, when we breakfast or sup, spread our bread, Grandpa, Grandpa said, with the butter side up. That's the right way, 
That's the right honest way, Grandpa gritted his teeth. So you can't trust a zook who spreads bread underneath. Every zook must be watched. He has kinks in his soul. That's why as a youth, I made watching my goal. Watching zooks for the zook watching border patrol. In those days, of course, the wall wasn't so high, and I could look any zook square in the eye. If he dared to come close, I could give him a twitch with my tough, tuft, prickly, snickberry switch. For a while, that worked fine. All the zooks stayed away, and our country was safe. Then one terrible day, a very, very rude zook by the name of Van Itch snuck up and slingshotted my snickberry switch. With my broken off switch, with my head hung in shame, to the chief Yukaru, in great sorrow I came. But our leader just smiled, he said you're not to blame, and the zooks will be sorry they started this game. We'll dress you right up in a fancier suit, we'll give you a fancier slingshot to shoot, and he ordered the boys in the back room to fidger, figure how to build me some sort of triple sling jigger. With my triple sling jigger, I sure felt much bigger. I marched to the wall with great vim and great vigor, right up to Van Itch with my hand on the trigger. I'll have no more nonsense, I said with a frown, from zooks who eat bread with the butter side down. Van Itch looked quite sickly, he ran off quite quickly. I'm happy to say it came back. he came back the next day in a spiffy new suit with a big new machine. And he snarled and he said, looking frightfully mean, You may fling those hard rocks with your triple slain jigger, but I also now have my hand on the trigger. My wonderful weapon, the jigger rock snatch'em, we'll fling em right back just as quick as we catch em. We'll have no more nonsense, we'll have no more gup, for you yukes who eat bread with the butter side up. I have failed, sir, I sobbed as I made my report to the chief yukuru in the headquarters fort. He just laughed, you have done nothing at all of the sort. Our slingshots have failed, that was old-fashioned stuff. Slingshots, dear boy, are not modern enough. They're about to bring out the gun, mm -hmm. the glock. All we need is some newfangled kind of a gun. Oh, wow, I was kidding. <laughs> my boys in the back room have already begun. To think up a walloping whiz-zinger one, my bright boys are thinking. They're, right, they're on the right track. They'll think up one quick and we'll send you right back. They thought up a great one, they certainly did. They thought up a gun called a Kickapoo Kid, when, which they loaded with powerful poo -a powder and ants' eggs and bees' legs and dried fried clam chowder. And they carefully trained a real smart dog named Daniel to serve our country's first gun-toting spaniel. Then Daniel, the Kickapoo Spaniel, and I marched back towards the wall with our heads held up high. While everyone cheered and their cheers filled the sky, Fight, fight for the butter side up, do or die. Well, we didn't do, and we didn't quite die, but we sh do Well, die. we didn't do, and we didn't quite die, but we sure did get worsted, poor Daniel and I. Van Itch was there too, and he said, the old pig, the boys in my back room invented this rig, called the eight-nozzled elephant toted boom blitz. It shoots high explosive sour cherry stone pits. And we'll put your dumb kickapoo kid on the fritz. Poor Daniel and I were scared out of our wits. Once more by Van Itch, I was bested and beat. Once again, I limped home from the wall in defeat. I dragged and I sagged and my spirits were low. As low as I thought that they could ever go. When I heard a boom bah and a diddle dee dill. And our butter up band marched up the hill. The chief Yukaroo had sent to me, them to meet me, along with the right side up girls to greet me. They sang, Oh, he is faith, oh, be faithful, believe in thy butter, and they lifted my spirits right out of the gutter. My boy smiled, the chief Yukaroo. We've just voted and made you general. You've been promoted. Your pretty new uniform is ready, get in it. The big war is coming, you're going to begin it. And what's more this time, you are certain to win it. My boys in the back room have finally found how. Just wait till you see what they've puttered up now. In their great new machine, you'll fly over that wall and clobber those butter down zooks once, one and all. Those boys in the back room sure knew how to putter, 
they made me a thing called the utterly sputter and i jumped aboard with my heart all aflutter and steered toward the land of upside down butter the machine was so modern so frightfully new no one knew quite exactly what it would do but it had several faucets that sprinkled blue goo which somehow would sprinkle the zooks as i flew and gum up the upside down butter they chew I was racing pell-mell when I heard a voice yell, if you sprinkle us zooks, you'll get sprinkled as well. Van Itch had a sputter exactly like mine, and he yelled, my blue gooer is working just fine. And I'm here to say that if yooks can go zooks, you'd better forget, cause zooks can goo yooks. I flew right back home, and you may have guessed, I was downright disturbed and depressed. And I saw just as soon as I stepped back on land, so were all the girls of butter up of the butter up band the chief drum majorette ms yuki ansu said that was a pretty sour flight that you flew and the chief yukaru has been looking for you i raced to his office the place was a sight have no fears said the chief everything is all right my back my bright back room boys have been brighter than bright they've thought up a gadget that's net newer than new it's filled with mysterious moo laka moo and they blow all the zooks clear to Sal Magoo. They've invented the bisty big boy bummeroo. You just run to the wall like a little nice man. Drop the bomb on the zooks just as fast as you can. I have ordered all the yooks to stay safe underground while the bitsy big boy boomeroo is around. As I raced for that wall with the bomb in my hand, I noticed every last yook in our land was obeying our chief Yukaru's grim command. They were all bravely marching with banners of flutter down a hole for their country and right side up butter. That's when grandfather found me. He grabbed me, he said, you should be down that hole and you're up here instead. But perhaps this is all for the better somehow. You'll see, you will see me make history right here and right now. Grandpa leapt up that wall with a lumpiest leap, and he cleared his horse throat with a bopalous beep. He screamed, here's the end of that terrible town, full of zook sweet bread with the butter side down. And at that very instant, we heard a clup clup of the feet on the wall, uh, and an old vantage clupped up. The boys in his back room had made him one too, and his first was another big boy bomberoo. I'll blow you, he yelled, into pork and wee beans. I'll butter side up you to small smithereens grandpa i shouted be careful oh gee who's going to drop it will you or will he be patient said grandpa we'll see we'll see the end okay that's um, dark what was my name bully i don't know i was bully de bum bully I have to sign my R. Oh, I was wondering yeah. what you're doing. T two M's. Bully de bum. Doesn't Bully. really matter how you spell it. Well, how will I sell it? Oh. Spell it, sell it. Okay. This is what I um this is what I got from it <laughs> while you were talking. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> High is bitter. Well, this will go to. Um Well, what do you think? Um I, well, I heard the wall, so immediately I thought of a lot of things. I thought of... The Berlin Wall. It gave me, which I don't know, when was this guy around? Because uh, I'm pretty sure it was, it's, uh, it seems like uh, Cold War vibes. Cold War? I was thinking of Israel. I was thinking of Mexico. And you might be more um, relevant with when he was writing it. So, yeah, maybe it was the Berlin Wall. Yeah, well, Berlin and you know the Soviet controlled one side and the U.S. controlled the other. Right. And what is it talking about? It's like these people are have a different belief than us, right? right? It was communism versus democracy, and what the Cold War was was never really. It was a standoff the entire time. It's well, I have this, I have this, and then the last thing you saw, even people going down to bunkers. I felt it represented okay. a nuclear bomb threat, mm -hmm. and then the very last page, it's. Well, what's going to happen? Who's going to drop it? Yeah, it's like, it sort of left us a little... And it's, we'll see, we'll see. And it's like, was that the Soviet Union and the U.S. being like, we... And it's just getting worse and worse. And I think it all goes back to how it started. So you said, that, well, that was dark. So you don't think that was appropriate for children? 
Or do you think a child would just say fun words, pretty pic- like it was on a well, different I think, level? I think that's the point of Dr. Seuss, and that's why we do Dr. Seuss Friday. Is how do you like say say on a literal sense this was about the Cold War? Okay, how do you explain the Cold War to kids? Right, and or and and I think more than that, it shows the silliness of war, doesn't it? But people will say in real life, it's not about where you butter your bread. It's human um what's it called human rights yeah. um violations yeah. and so like like where you know kind of having a little justifying yeah so th- so what do you say i don't know <laughs> okay i mean i think that's case by case i think yeah just like if you boil it down though like i think more than more than what's it called not fighting at all mm-hmm. it's is what you're fighting for worth it? Right. And like, and how quickly things can get out of hand, even when you just are dealing with someone else. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you get mad, and then it spirals. And you see it with with fights. Like, yeah, you get into a fight with someone, and then it's back and forth, back and forth. And now you know people shooting each other, and it's like this all started over a girl. Right. You know what I mean? It was like two years ago, uh, you got cheated on, and now you know two years later. In the center, in, in an urban environment, um, people died over it. Right. And uh, I think that's that's really what it is. And if you look at this book with the other book of everyone being different, this was like this shows a contrast. Mm-hmm. The other one is like, I don't care if you bathe in a lake, let's come out and play. Right. This is that that division that put up a wall. Right. And then even in the very beginning, it was. Ooh, we don't talk to those people over there. Right. They we, keep they, they know to keep yeah their distance. Yeah, we, we we don't like each other. And it's like maybe if they just sat down and just enjoyed a piece of toast together, maybe they should try each other's way. Maybe they might like it. How about that? Yeah, because so regardless if it was I don't like the way you butter your toast. Um say it was a bigger reason what what i just introduced yeah. it would be something so terrible that we have to fight the, there would still never be a winner because every time the one side upped first it was just um i don't know what he had something yeah. then he was a slingshot and then he's like well come back with a gun um if the other side regardless of what is happening if you are trying to fix it with those tactics um, you're basically going to be pretty equally matched unless you are overpowering somebody who doesn't have the ability to match you. But I think what you see in wars is that people are equally matched. And so yeah. they just keep, yeah. you get a bigger... And that's, you know, that's World War II. That's when, you know, eventually bombs were dropped. But, you know, in our last few minutes, to we have a spiritual podcast and we yes. talk spiritually. Yes. I think you see a lot of this in religion, right? With other religions or lack thereof. Mm-hmm. I-, I talked about it yesterday of... Um, people on TikTok that are just arguing religion. Right. And I think an important takeaway from this is they're getting so mad at each other when it doesn't affect them. Like they're both eating, right? Like it, it's not, they're both in eating the way they want to. Right. And and they're still, they're eating the same thing actually. Right. You know, if, if you want to get real deep into it, it's right. like they're both getting that higher pa- power into them. And if we, we called it love, and that's why I said I don't, I don't try to, I don't try to push beliefs on anyone because if I ask you, do you believe in love, and you do, then I believe God's in you. Right. And in this, if you like, is the butter and toast love, and it's like, but he's not doing it the right way. Right. He's he's not like, saying it like this and, and and going through these steps, and it's like, well, he's eating. Right. You know, and and right. some and someone on the outside who's looking at both of these people, they're like they're both eating the same thing. Right. But they're it's just how you do it. Yeah, and on um just one more thing, which one is more thing. one more thing. Um, sometimes when you're hearing about someone, you know, trying to convert someone else or push their beliefs on someone else, it'll you, it's like you have the bully and then you have the bullied. Yeah, bullied the bum. But um, in this story and in life, both of them are not. So the one is saying, "Put it right side up," and the other, the other guy is not like, "Leave me alone." The other guy is like, "You're gonna put it right yeah. side down." Yeah. So they both are are. At an impasse. Yeah, and and when you have that, then just like in this, there's no like no amount of anger or trying to change them is going to change their mind. Right. If anything, it's like 
you should handle it with love, no walls, and then the person will be more likely to try what you're doing rather than stop it. Stand it's their like, ground. Yeah. Learn. But you let us know what you guys think. If anyone wants this book and this painting, <laughs> both of them will be signed. It will go to the highest bidder. I have Venmo and Cash App. But we'll be back next week for One Word Wednesday, second week of February. Until then, go out and don't get into any wars and uh, butter your toast, whatever side makes you I'm happy. I'm going to do the edges. Not top or bottom. Just, oh, just the crust. <laughs> you deserve to get bombed for that. Peace. Peace.